Well, hey, Jordan, thank you so much for joining me once again on our next reaction video. <laughs> it's good to be back. So today uh, we're going to be covering November 6th. Uh, I believe that was a Sunday and it was a rainy, rainy day. And in fact, uh, we've got some images here of just how wet and rainy. We finally got our rainy day. And we finally got our rainy day. And of course, the day before we were um, hanging out with uh, Mark Wackenberg oh, there in uh, Bicycle Dutch there in uh in Sir Haltenbosch. And so we are, you know, just kind of chilling on this, this rainy day. Uh, these are just some images, some still shot images that you shot and you can see the, the rain just pelting the, the water in the canal there. And it, it was, it was kind of fun having a, a, a rainy day, a rest day. And, uh, we ended up just kind of hanging out in a cafe a little bit. And I think we had a really nice breakfast at some point in time and, or lunch. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is the, this is what it was like <laughs> there in Delft. It was nice to have a day that felt okay to just stay in <laughs> yeah, finally. Yeah. And we did, we stayed in for a little while, but then yeah. we, we were like, okay, we, we need, we need, it's not raining that hard. We've got our rain not gear many. with us. Uh, you know, j j just like they, they always say there in the, in the Netherlands, uh, we are not made of sugar. We're not going to dissolve. We're not going to melt. <laughs> so, uh, we, we were like, okay, we're, enough of this. And, uh, so I put it, I put together a little video here of what it was like. We were, uh, just actually sitting in this, uh, cafe, and uh and watching folks go by and this was one of my favorite locations the cat the the coffee company here and just kind of watching the the folks roll past and uh and we were just doing some computer work yeah yeah you you found this spot and this was like the best place to sit and watch yeah. life happen while we didn't do anything. Yeah. So we, we hung out there for, I don't know, maybe a, an hour or two with our laptops mm -hmm. and did a little bit of work and watched, uh, you know, watched and filmed from the window. And then we were like, okay, it's not raining that hard. Let's go, let's go out. And so I, I wanted to show you this street. This is one of my favorite streets in the neighborhood where I was staying. And, uh, and, and we were, on a mission and will that mission will be, uh, uh, become clear in just a moment. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let this roll a little bit and have you reflect uh, on this. Cause this is in my neighborhood, uh, which was right. uh, not, not necessarily where you were staying. Yep. Just another narrow Dutch street that, <laughs> that all works. Oh, that this all works. was great. The pedestrianized uh, one and half of this, the street. And then this, yeah. So this is very special. This was one, this is one of the only that I know of uh, pedestrianized streets in the old historic uh, downtown sort of area of Delft that is canal side. And I uh, just mm -hmm. absolutely love this. And uh, technically, yeah, you can ride your bike to, to park it, but they really prefer you to, to walk your bike because it is so narrow. And I don't even, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, the name of the street. Buiten <laughs> That's there my guess. Go. That's the, the good job. Thank and you. then you found this, we found this, we, uh, we were actually on a mission as, as I had mentioned that we were trying to get to a specific location, but, um, this permeability was so cool. Oh yeah, I think there there was a home above us. Is that right? Yeah, they had these yeah. nice pass throughs, but it's like, yeah. well, you might as well make sp use of the space above it. Yeah, I I suspect it. Or it may school, have, maybe. Yeah, I, it's and it's and it's actually named. It's it's a it's a true street, but it's just so cool that yeah, this is just like a, a little pass through. I mean, from yeah. an American perspective, this is really really you know earth shattering, but from a, a Dutch perspective, they're like, yeah, whatever, whatever guys. Yeah. It's just connectivity, permeability through the block. <laughs> right. Here and then it, then it dumps us out here, which is super, super cool. And, uh, again, just another, like you said, you know, you know, paved or excuse me, not paved, but, uh, um, you know, paver stones or bricks, uh, street and nice calm traffic environment. And, um, uh, just absolutely delightful. And then it brings us here. 
So this was our destination. <laughs> so we were looking to uh, discover uh, what is widely recognized as uh, the, f- the first or one of the first uh, vonerfs, the vonerfs out there. Nope. Almost got that right. You Bonerf? go for it. Yeah. Vonerf. Vonerf. Yeah. We're getting there. It, you know, it, the original recording of, of this, this video, uh, which I'll make sure there's a, a, a link in the show notes to this video, is uh, uh, you can hear me doing the, the voiceover on there and, and walking and talking as we're going. And I'm like, woo, nerf. <laughs> like, it's so bad now. Sorry, yeah, guys. When in, doubt, when in doubt, just say it the most sort of Americanized version. Yeah. Yeah. And at, like with a wink to be like insinuating yeah, yeah. that, you know, how it's really pronounced, but you're doing this at, for the laughs. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but this is very, very special. This this is, um, you know, something this is a, a, a living street, a people oriented street. So the, the cars have been removed from this environment and uh, it, it, it becomes an extension of uh, the homes that are here. And it was raining pretty, pretty hard. And this is some video that, that we shot as we, we strolled through the area. And I think I made the comment to you that, you know, I felt a little bit weird because it does really feel like they're an extension of their uh, private property, even though we know it's a street. Yeah, it was sort of just like any other Dutch street where everybody's got their windows open and you're always a little bit sheepish about looking inside. Um, but it felt even more like sort of their outdoor living room because of all the, you know, human oriented, you know, the street, the furniture and the play things outside. Yeah. But yeah, like the cool, the, the attraction here is like, you know, the comparison to what it is versus what it used to be. Like, that's obviously the, what makes this so awesome. Like you could sort of walk by and not even know that this used to be also space for cars right the way it looks now yeah well i i really uh, appreciated the fact that we were able to you know go and check that out and see you know one of the very first vunerfs out there um and uh here here we are at the end of it and and looking out onto the the main street here and then (laughs) we spy a really cool park pocket park uh, mm-hmm. right across the street there and also where the trash and recycling collection is. Yeah. There's a lot going on in this little corner of Delft for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it, we, uh, decided to, you know, continue exploring. So we, uh, you know, turn the corner, walk down the street a little bit and we're just kind of exploring and wait a minute. Voila. We're like right there. <laughs> How cool is this? That's awesome. And and back, you know, that that previous shot when you were looking the other way is one of these great examples of the allowing car traffic to go through, but sort of making the driver do that zigzag motion that keeps speeds low. I just yeah. think this street and the little area that we just saw that was completely turned into like a living space are such great examples of, you know, this works. It's not just that the the buildings are close to one another. It's that it's a whole reimagining and rethinking the answer to the question what what the street is for or what the public space between the buildings is for. Right. And here it's like, well, you know, the primary thing is that people are going to use this space outside for things beyond just, you know, frictionless car movement. I think that there's a lot for us to take away in the, you know, how they reframed how this space could be allocated. Yeah. I'm really glad that you pointed that out too, because I I had kind of forgotten uh, that there was this zigzag here. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, you're still using some of the space for the storage of private automobiles in the public realm. But with this zigzag, you're able to create a, you know, a traffic calming uh, feature to this, you know, without having, you know, other other features and other things like, uh, you know, uh, annoying uh, speed humps and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, This really does such an effective job because it's like the sight line as you're looking down the street here. Yeah, uh, it doesn't look like a runway. 
Yeah, and I think the lesson is there even for our neighborhoods, maybe in North America, that have much wider streets, much wider right of ways. The same kind of thought process can be employed to say, like, is it that important that you can reach top speeds, you know, coming home from work or getting dropping the kids off at school? Or is it are there things that we would like to be possible here that are in conflict with that, you know, that capacity for driving fast? Right. Which is a pretty interesting philosophical question to answer because you're you're really, you know, trying to come up with an answer to the question that you just posed is what are these streets for? Yeah. Yeah. Streets are public space. And in many cities, it's, you know, a huge chunk of the overall public space in a city is in the right of way. Yeah. So yeah. lots of opportunities to reframe that. I think, I think even more so in, in the, in, um, you know, in North American cities that have really wide rights of way, it's like, you know, we sometimes, uh, the urbanist crowd may almost consider that like a negative like, well, it's so wide, you know, everything's so wide, but I mean, we could reframe that as, you know, even broader possibilities for what can be done in those spaces. Right. Well, I think that too, if it's an extremely wide street, you can redefine the space in a, a creative way of actually maybe putting in a protected bikeway or uh, other types of features. It's kind of the awkward, you know, widths that are the the tough ones you know like 40 feet is a really tough uh you know width to deal with in many ways because it's not quite wide enough for protected infrastructure for for biking uh but it's still so wide that it encourages fast moving vehicles and it, is there on street parking is there not all those sorts of mm -hmm. stuff so yeah i yeah, love this and then, and then you look being, at mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you look at something like this, sorry to, to butt in, and that's no, no. what, I, it's hard for me to judge here, is this 20 feet, is it less, I don't know, yeah. maybe 20 feet between these buildings? And, you know, they, you know, maybe this might not be considered perfect for every single use involved here, but, you know, I think even 40 feet in the U.S. context feels like pretty, pretty, narrow but it, then you look at something like this and you're like well there's more space than we think we have yeah yeah and you can also tell uh based on how the the space is or is utilized here um you really there's no real quote-unquote pedestrian realm uh yeah, and exactly. so it is completely shared space right Good stuff. I love it. And I just love the fact that, you know, this street, as we swing around and we look in this direction and we're like, oh, yeah, yeah duh, <laughs> we're right here at the central station. And yeah. uh, and then from here, you can literally get anywhere in the Netherlands. And with a, a, a quick transfer, you can get pretty much anywhere in Europe. So pretty amazing. And yes, and we did. We we made use of that possibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, that's it. I mean, it was a short one today. <laughs> we just wanted to uh, kind of share with everybody, uh, uh, you know, some of the ramblings and, and sites that we saw on this rest day that we had. Uh, any, any final thoughts, any final uh, reflections from uh, our rainy day in Delft? No, I think, well, you know, I pretty much hit what was the biggest thing to me. It's maybe less the specifics of how that street really turned out and more the general thought process and the question asking of what that space is for, what do we want it to be for? And then like having that inform the design, right? And then the design can help shape the activities there. I just, it's a great example. You can see yeah. why people, you know, make trips there like we did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this was a great place to kind of just hang out. I mean, it was it was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful little city. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to to get back. And uh, thank you all for joining us uh, on this little uh, trip down memory lane once again. Uh, up next, uh, we're going to head out to uh, Nijmegen and uh, uh, visit a few folks down there. So uh Look forward to having you back. Until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. 
And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.